My name is Renee Reynolds. I'm from the St. Louis branch. And for our first speaker, we'll have the Dean of Indianapolis, Indiana, Gregory Mobley. Okay. Hey, thank you. Good uh, afternoon, everyone. <laughs> I'm really excited, you see, and it's, it's kind of hard to hold it down, but nevertheless, uh, I'm always happy uh, to get an opportunity to testify of some of the things in which I have learned since being attendance at this school. And Yahweh has truly blessed us here in Indianapolis as far as uh, and I'd like to get this out the way first, as far as the thanks that support we got last year, which was the first Indiana State Convention, and also in between time, all the brethren that have visited uh, the Indianapolis School from all over the country. And also, we got a double dose of love this year with the Northern Regional being here in Indianapolis. You see, and I'd like to really uh, thank everybody. You see, because without you, you see, it would be hard to continue in this fight. Because, see, the devil is not playing down here at the end of an age. You see, and we all have to raise each other's arm up and show that compassion and love for one another. Now, uh, seeing that we don't have much time in uh, these conventions for uh, speaking, I'd like to introduce uh, to our new ones, which it, I kind of recall when uh, I was listening to a tape with uh, Dr. Kinley on it when they were setting up the school in uh, 1958 uh, in California and how he would say, as far as the new ones are concerned, how that anything else that might be happening in your personal life or in your school or anything, as far as those new ones come, to bring them into the fold, how we're just supposed to embrace them and bend over backwards. You see, and try to bring them into the self-same gospel that we all have received. You see, and I'm going to try to deal with that. You see, I'm talking about what the gospel is. Because, see, the world out there, they know nothing about Yahweh, his purpose, his pattern, and his plan, and he does have that. You see, and he has plainly showed us in this school that he does have a purpose, you see, and it's operated, and he also has a, a pattern, you see, that we all go by, that even we came into this world by, you see, and he does have a plan, and he's going to carry it out, and there are going to be no hindrances or obstructions. You see, and the way we have to do is either get on the right side, Yahweh's side, or just suffer ourselves, you see, to be deceived by the adversary. There is no in-between. You see, now the way this school came about is as a result of a direct and divine vision doc, uh, given to Dr. Henry C. Kinley, whose name is at the corner of this chart in the year 1931 in Springfield, Ohio. Now, he said, don't simply believe it because I say it, but make me prove it. You see, and, and by the evidence that we have to have an overflow room, and this room is full, that it has been proven to somebody's satisfaction and understanding. You see? Now, where was I at? Now, when he was given this vision and revelation, it was incumbent upon this one man to carry this message out into the world. And as you come into this school, and as you start being raised up, I would say, in this gospel, you'll start understanding that nobody knows nothing about Yahweh, but Yahweh. And then this man would turn around, you see, and then tell you the things about Yahweh. In other words, what I'm trying to say, we have to come cognizant of aware not only what was tabernacling in that physical body, but also what is tabernacling in this physical body. You see, uh, give me Revelations 3 and... Uh, About hot or cold, I think it's 13 or 14. Revelation 3, 15. Mm-hmm. Now, see, first of all, for the new ones here, when we say Yahweh, what we're talking about is what we was accustomed to, to calling Lord. When we say, uh, now that is the Creator's true name. And we ask you, don't simply believe it because we say it, but you do the investigation. You see, and when we tell you these names, now there's a lot of organizations out there using this name. You see, now this name, it does have a meaning. It's not like uh, names we give our kids 
for our parents gave us. You see, I got a teenage son at home. And some girls are called there. And they got names now that I have to say, who? You see, I mean, it's because we name them because it sounds good or something we come up with. But it's not like that with the Creator. He gave, it, we didn't name him, he gave his own name. And his name means something. Yah meaning one who is, way meaning the ultimate source. You see, and let these things think, uh, sink in. Yahweh is the ultimate source. Okay? Now, Elohim or Elohim, that's his divine title that he chose for himself. And the choir just got finished talking about uh, how precious is the name of Yahshua. You see, that's the name of the son who uh, the world calls Jesus Christ. You see, and that means Yahweh is Savior or salvation. So when you come to know this, you'll find out this is your only way, and this is your only truth, and this is your only life to come through Yahshua, the Messiah. Now, they might use Yahweh out in the world, you see, but there's not a whole bunch of them except this organization that's using Yahshua. You see? Uh, read there in Revelations. Revelations 3.15. Mm-hmm. I know thy works. Now, see, I know thy works. Now, see, the Holy Spirit. Now, people got a concept that uh, man wrote the Bible. You see? Man did not write the Bible. See, man, and man translated the Bible. See, the Bible itself tells you that it was Yahweh or God through those prophets that did the writing, you see? And that Bible is Yahweh or God's record of himself, you see? Even though there may be some mistranslations and interpolations in it, you see? Now read. I know thy works. Now I know thy works. That thou art neither cold nor hot. Now see that I'm neither cold, that a person is neither cold nor hot. You can't be that way. You see, read. I would that thou was cold or hot. Now see, Yahweh desires that you either be one way or the other. If you come into this class and give all to, this, to your class. You see, if you're not going to be in it, then just go on out there and party like you want or whatever. Mm -hmm. you, you see, because at, at the end, it's going to be manifest. Mm -hmm. You see, read on. So then, because mm -hmm. thou art lukewarm. Now see, some people say, well, I don't know whether to believe this or I don't want to I don't know whether to believe that. Well, go to church of your choice and go here and go there, in and out, and all that kind of stuff. You're going to have to make a decision. You see, you're going to have, we can tell you all the proof and evidence that we've come up with on our personal individual base, but you're going to have to also do it your own self. See, it does me no good to tell you what I've checked out unless you go and check it out. You don't know whether I'm lying to you or telling you the truth. You see? Read on. So then, because thou art lukewarm, mm -hmm. and neither cold nor hot, uh -huh. I will spew thee out of my mouth. Now, that's what Yahweh said. It's not about being lukewarm. It's either being hot or, or it's being cold. Now, over there in 2 Corinthians, the fifth chapter, and we're talking about uh, the gospel. I think it's around... The Gospel of Reconciliation. Okay, the 17th verse. And somebody else give me Romans 1st and 2nd chapter. Mm hmm. 2 Corinthians 5 17. Mm hmm. Therefore, if any man be in the Messiah, mm -hmm. he is a new creature. Mm hmm. Old things are passed away. Mm hmm. Behold, all things are become new. Mm hmm. And all things are of Yahweh, mm -hmm. who hath reconciled us to himself. Now, see, uh, read. Yahweh has reconciled us unto himself, right? Now, how has he done that? By read. Yahshua the Messiah, mm -hmm. and hath given to us the ministry of reconciliation. Now, first of all, start out talking about Yahweh has given us the... You see, what? Start over again, that last uh, uh, verse. And all things are of Yahweh. Now see, all things are of Yahweh. And I started off saying Yahweh is the ultimate source. Is that right? You see, read on. Who has reconciled us to himself. Now he has reconciled us, you see, unto himself. Read. By Yahshua the Messiah. By Yahshua the Messiah. Mm -hmm. And hath given to us mm -hmm. the ministry of reconciliation. Now hath given unto us the ministry of reconciliation or the gospel of reconciliation. Now you have a lot of ministries out there. Is that right? 
You see, and where you have a lot of people profess that they're teaching or preaching the gospel. And a lot of them have come up with so much as there are four gospels. Yeah. You understand? Well, let's not go by what they say, or let's go by what I say, but let's go by what the book says. That's right. You see, now Romans 1.16. Romans 1, 16. Mm -hmm. For I am not ashamed of the gospel now, of Messiah. Now, here's Paul. He's talking about, I am not ashamed of the four gospels. No. That's not what he's talking about. I am not ashamed. You see? You know how you're ashamed of something. Yeah. You see? Now, see, I'm going to give it to you naturally, and hopefully before I get down, you can understand what I'm talking about. I'm talking about living this gospel. You see? And he's not ashamed of it. Now, what are, what are you not ashamed of, Paul? Read. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of the Messiah. Now, he said one gospel. I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Yahshua the Messiah. This is the gospel of the Messiah. This is not our gospel, folks. That's right. You see, read. For it is the power of Yahweh. Now, this is it. This is the power of Yahweh. Read. Unto salvation. Unto salvation. You talking about you want to be saved, I want to be saved, or how are you saved? Well, it's telling you right there in one place. That the gospel is the power of Yahweh unto salvation. Right. You see? Read. To everyone that believeth. To everyone that believeth. Is that right? Right. Believe what? <laughs> huh? To everyone. That, there's a lot of beliefs out there in the world. You see? In other words, believing what the gospel is. Mm -hmm. And see, people want to know by how am I going to be judged? See, they, a lot of us think that we're going to... The last day, walk up in front of a big old throne, mm -hmm. you see, and then God's going to open a great book. Mm -hmm. And while we're standing in line, we're going to be thinking about how we're going to get around and what story we're going to tell him to get on into heaven. It's not that way. See, we, you have to be conscious and aware you are in the judgment right now. Mm -hmm. And you must have the judge in you, you see. Romans 2 and 13, I believe it is. Romans 2, 13. Mm -hmm. For not the hearers of the law are just before Yahweh, mm -hmm. but the doers of the law shall be justified. Uh -huh. For when the Gentiles, which have not the law, mm -hmm. do by nature the things contained in the law, mm -hmm. these having not the law are a law unto themselves. That's right. Which show the work of the law written in, our, in their hearts. Mm -hmm. Their conscience also bearing witness, mm -hmm. and their thoughts the meanwhile accusing or else excusing one another. Mm -hmm. In the day when Yahweh shall judge the now secrets. Now hold it. In the day, you see, when Yahweh will do what? Shall judge the secrets. Shall judge the secrets. See, the eye of Yahweh is everywhere, mm -hmm. beholding both the good and the evil. There is no secret hidden from his uh, from Yahweh. You understand? So all the secrets are being judged, read, mm -hmm. or revealed. You see? Read. And the day when Yahweh shall judge the secrets of men mm -hmm. by Yahshua the Messiah. Mm -hmm. Now here it comes back to that Yahshua the Messiah again. It seems like everything you got to go through this Yahshua the Messiah. That's right. You understand? Read. According to my gospel. Go, oh, never mind. Go ahead. According to my gospel. According to my gospel. Now who wrote the book? I mean, or who wrote that epistle? Uh -huh. It was Paul filled with the Holy Spirit. Is that right? Mm -hmm. You see, now he says the world is judged according to that gospel. Is that right? Now, what we would have to know is, well, Paul, what are you talking about? That's right. What gospel are you saying? See, this convention kicked off on a good note. You understand what I'm talking about? I'm talking about even yesterday from the, the moderation, the prayer, and I thought he was going to go on. You understand? <laughs> the choirs. And the vessels that was up on the floor giving us witnesses. Now, we might have heard some of them things before, but it's uplifting. It's uh, refreshing to hear those things over and over and over again. You understand? No matter what school you go to, you hear the self-same gospel. They can't say that out in the world. You see, they can, you go to one Baptist church, you see, they might say one thing. And then even the church is not the same. You go to another one, they might be called the Second Baptist Church. Mm -hmm. Or even the Southern Baptist Church. You're more or less agreeing, they can't agree on the names, more or less on the doctrine that's being taught. That's right. You understand? Now, this Paul wrote about a gospel. Mm -hmm. Now, he, he wrote about it somewhere where you can read your Bible and find out what this gospel is. Not for, but just one. Mm -hmm. You see? 1 Corinthians 15. 1 Corinthians 15 and 1. Mm -hmm. Moreover, brethren. Now, moreover, 
or more so what I done said unto you before. Read. I declare unto you the gospel. Now he's declaring unto them the gospel. Mm -hmm. You see? Now I know a lot of us have heard it and a lot of us know it. You understand? You see? <laughs> a lot of us do know it. Or should I say a lot of us can go through it. Yeah. You see? Yeah. That's what I'm talking about. You see, but... If Yahweh willing, when you get down, you'll find out it's harder. It's easy to look up here on these charts and see somebody else crucified. You see, it's easy to do that. Yeah. And it gets fun to talk about. You understand? But then when you have to bring some things on home, it's not so easy no more. That's right. You see? Read. Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel uh -huh. which I preached unto you. Now, he's preached it to them before, right? Read. Which also ye have received. And they received it. Read. And in which ye stand. Now you have to stand in this gospel. Is that right? Read. By which also ye are saved. Now see, by also which you are saved. You see, if you don't want to be saved, then you don't know what, then if you don't want to know the gospel, then you don't, that's what you're saying, you don't want to be saved. Right. Because the gospel, you see, if, if, to know that is to be saved. Yes. You see? And you're talking about saved. Mm -hmm. Say, you ask a person out the world, they come up, are you saved? And you ask them, well, what do you mean? Have you accepted Jesus Christ? Mm -hmm. Or something another like mm -hmm. that. That's not being saved. Mm -mm. You see? Free. <laughs> if you keep in memory. Now, you have to keep this thing in memory. No matter how many times it's repeated, didn't he start off saying, moreover? That wasn't the first time he said it. Right. That's just the first time he wrote about it. All right. You understand? You see? And we've heard it plenty of times before, but you have to keep it in memory. That's right. You understand? See, these things there, a lot of them are types and shadows. Or these charts up here is pictorial in illustrations of the vision and revelation that the founder had. Is that right? And he's not ashamed of that. Right. You understand? And sooner or later, when you start coming into a knowledge and understanding of Yahweh, Elohim, and Yahshua, you will start taking these things off the charts, you see, and putting them right here within you. You understand? Read. If you keep in memory uh -huh. what I preached unto you, uh -huh. unless ye have believed in vain. Read. For I delivered unto you, first of all, uh -huh. that which I also received, uh -huh. that the Messiah died for our sins, uh -huh. according to the scriptures. Now look, when I came to class, I didn't even know what a Bible was, more or less scriptures. You see? Now look, this is beautiful when you when you when you think about when you just think about when you first come into class and don't let these things slip, okay? Right. You know, when you talk about scriptures, now look, when this man was walking around in a physical body, here's a secret. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John had not wrote anything. You see, Acts had not been written, mm -hmm. neither had the letters of, or epistles of doctrine, neither had revelations been written. You understand? Mm -hmm. And they didn't write anything to some 20 to 50 years after his death, burial, and resurrection. But see, as he's speaking there, mm -hmm. or as Paul is speaking there about the scriptures, give me John 5:39. Make it more plainer, what I'm talking about. John 5, 39. Uh-huh. Ye search the scriptures. Now, Yahshua was telling him, you search the scriptures. Mm -hmm. Uh-huh. For in them ye think ye have eternal life. And see, the same way it was then, the same way it is now. People think by running around and just reading the Bible, you understand that they're going to be saved or inherit eternal life. That's not what it's talking about. Yahshua said, search the scriptures. For in them ye think ye have eternal life. Read on. And they are they which testify of me. And not understanding the scriptures testify of him. You see, everything, see the scriptures, the only thing that they had written at that time when he was walking around in a physical body is what? The law, which is the first five books of the Bible. Is that right? Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. And the prophecy, which was from Joshua all the way over on the Malachi. Mm -hmm. See, and it was like an arrow pointing straight at him. But prior to coming to this class, we thought that it was talking about us. Yeah, I walked through the valley of the shadows of death and all that kind of thing when you got down. You yeah. won't even walk through the darkness out here at night by yourself. <laughs> and you're talking about walking through a valley of darkness? Daytime. You understand? Daytime. See, that wasn't about you. It's about him. The whole thing is about him. You see, that's what we're trying to get you to understand. And you're going to have to be conscious of that. It's about him. You understand? Read on. Search the scripture for anything you think you have eternal life or the law and the testimony, which we commonly call the Old Testament. Is that right? Read. 
And you will not come to okay, me. Okay, never mind. Back over in First Corinthians. Okay. Just pick up where you were. First Corinthians 15, 3. Uh -huh. For I delivered unto you, first of all, that which I also received. Mm -hmm. See, you have to have a foundation to stand on. That's right. Mm -hmm. You understand? I mean, you see, I can't get up here and start going up in this cloud and just trying to tell you something about Yahweh because we all come into class, we're down here. Mm -hmm. yeah. You understand? And then you give a person a firm down foundation or something to stand on, then, as it's like a relay race, then you pass the baton on, then you start bringing them up on out of Egypt. Mm -hmm. You see, bringing them on up through the wilderness, you understand? And then give them the reality of the thing uh, typified by this Canaan's land. You see, a person has a raise on up, a, a, a mother that has a child or a baby, it doesn't come out 21 years old grown. Nope. <laughs> Does it? Yes. Okay. Read. That the Messiah died for our sins according to the scriptures. Now, according to the scripture, we told you what the scriptures was, a death, I mean, uh, the law and the testimony. Is that right? Now, we didn't know that, that he died for our sins according to the Old yes. Testament. Yes. Somebody will give you the Bible. Do you know where Jesus died at? And they'll say, yes, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. No, see, that has escaped the world. You see, about the scriptures. You see, what are you have to know what the scriptures are. I'm talking about back all the way with Moses and, and even back further. You understand? Read on. And that he was buried. And that he was buried. And that he rose again the third day. What are you talking about again? I ran to this. Uh, 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 a reporter came to the house last week and was asking about this convention. You understand? And she was talking about she was a Baptist. But as we kept talking about this convention and talking about class and just a simple... In its simplicity, I'm talking about this gospel. I'm talking about in its simplicity. Mm -hmm. You understand? She then got off about the interview, and she started getting interested in the class. And the last thing she said before she left the house, yeah, I heard about where they say, uh, she was quoting something that they said again somewhere else. Uh, oh, yeah, tell the vision to no man until the son of man be risen again for the dead. So yeah. I'm going to I'm going to leave this on your heart and mind so I make sure you come to class. Show me where he died before. Because if I drop this pointer and picked it up, and then I dropped it, that's again. That's right. Right. So you're talking about again, and it's right there in your book, where did he die before? Uh -huh. They know nothing about those things, and they have that's been right. revealed to us right. since coming into this school. You understand? But anyway, go ahead. How did Yahshua die for our sins according to the scriptures? And that he was buried, uh -huh. and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. And while I'm on that, see, just continuation from last night, what they were dealing with was blood, water, spirit, and forty. Is that right? It's the self-same thing. See, these two are or there. These three are synonymous to death. Is synonymous to some blood. Is that right? Mm -hmm. you see, burial until some water. You see, in Genesis resurrection, you see, it's likened unto some spirit. See, Yahweh said, "Well, look, if you don't see it this way, now I'll give you that way." You don't see it that way. I mean, he, we are compassed about what's so great a cloud of witness. We don't just tell, we got all kind of ways, you see, to get you. It's just as if you want to accept the truth or not. That's right. You see, not that, not that making you trying to believe the truth, the truth will stand on its own. That's right. You understand? <laughs> now, let's go back and let's, let's just pick up some types and some shadows to see if we can find out where was this Messiah back in the lawn, in the testimony, and where did this gospel start at? You understand? Mm -hmm. Now, you start here, you see, you're told in Luke 24, 44 to start here with Moses. That's is right. that right? Now, see, Moses is born under a death decree. Now, listen to this. These things are just types. They're shadows. Mm -hmm. They're allegories. They're metaphors. Or they're stories within a story. You see? And it's pointing up to a certain one. You understand? You see? Now, here Moses born under a death decree. Then when his mother could no longer hide him, he's placed in an ark. Is that right? You see, and then, you see, uh, Pharaoh's daughter coming down to bathe one day. She spies the ark, and then she resurrects Moses out of that ark. See, simple story. We've all heard it. They even tried to make movies about it. You understand? They messed that all up. You see? I mean, you got the words right there. If, if you don't come... If, well, I'm telling you the truth. If you don't come into class and the knowledge and understand, it's like... You can count. I'll give you an example. I'll give you something natural. You can understand what I'm talking about. Now, as many people out there as have the Bible, they got one creator, but yet you got thousands of different religions. Yeah. Is that right? right. And the, the Bible reads the self same way. 
You understand? But they all got their own interpretation. You understand? Mm -hmm. Now, if the one that calls the, the prophets and so forth to write that book, don't reveal it unto you, you wouldn't understand it. Mm -mm. You see, all of them out there can read a lot better than even you and I. You understand? But they can't understand it. See, it's one thing to have a vision, but you also, it has to be accompanied by what? A revelation. Mm -hmm. You understand? That's right. You see? Mm -hmm. Now, all of us can count to ten, right? Mm -hmm. But how many of us can pick up a physics or a calculus book? And see, they're using one through ten, but a lot of us would just be lost. Mm -hmm. You see, that's just the way they are out there. Where that book to them is like a book that is just sealed. You understand? Yeah. Even though they read the words the same as you That's and I. Right. You understand? Now here Moses is grown after 40 years. Mm -hmm. Then he kills an Egyptian. Then he buries him in the sand. And then he does what? When he finds out that his life, you understand, was at stake, that Pharaoh had found out he killed that Egyptian, he fled out here into the land of Midian. You understand? You see? Now see, first of all, they started off, the children of Israel, out here in Canaan's land. Then Yahweh made a promise to Abraham, I'm going to bless, uh, 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 Abraham, your seed, but they, first of all, they have to go down to a land that they knew not of, you see. But I will deliver them up unto Canaan's land. And that was a promise that was given 400 to 430 years, you see, before the children of Israel were delivered out of the land of Egypt. You understand? Now, just the little things right there that I talked about, see, it gives you some kind of concrete proof. Now, just like was stated last night, here you have a Savior. But if you walk up to the average person and ask them, look, prove to me that there was a man that walked on the face of the earth that died for my sins and can save me. See, they can't do that. They'll just say, well, I believe it in my heart. Yeah. You understand? Yeah. Well, see, believing something in your heart is not going to do you any good. That's you have right. to know these things. That's right. You understand? Now, uh, he flees out here into the land of Midian. Now, just through these stories, this to these types and the shadows starting to give you a little inkling how they point up to Yahshua the Messiah. You see, now Moses, he was born under what? A death decree. You understand? Now that's pointing up, see, to Yahshua the Messiah. You, you're talking about a death or some blood. Is that right? You see, and then he was buried in that ark. And then he had to be placed not in the water, but on the flags by the river's brink. See, you got some burial and you hear a tale of some water. You understand? And then Moses, you see, was resurrected by Pharaoh's daughter. You're talking about a resurrection or by the Holy Spirit. There were babies down there killed, but Moses was preserved by the Holy Spirit. You see, you got some death, you got some burial, you got some resurrection, or you got some blood, you got some water, and you got some spirit. Is that right? You see? And then Moses killed that Egyptian. That's what? Some death or some blood. Is that right? You see, and then he buries him in the sand, talking about a burial. And then Moses flees out here to the land of Midian. You're talking about what? A resurrection. A death, a burial, and a resurrection. See, that's in the law. Is that right? See, and that's all talking about Yahshua the Messiah. You see? Now, you see, even in the prophet, every story, see, when Yahweh, the way he writes, you can tell the way Yahweh writes, it just repeats itself over and over and over again. You see, it's just, a, it's just a, a repetition. You see, he said over in Ezekiel 127 or 27, I will overturn and overturn and overturn. See, if you don't see it here, maybe I'll give it to you somewhere else, right? You see, so then he goes out here for another period of 40 years. Then while Moses is out here, he marries uh, Jethro Well's daughter. Then he receives the name at this burning bush of Yahweh, and him and his brother Aaron, they go back down into the land of Egypt. Is that right? Now, Egypt means darkness or ignorance. You understand? Now, when he's down here in the land of Egypt, you see, he was told that uh, uh, to deliver the children of Israel up out of the land of Egypt. Well, I'm telling you, Moses is not and was not, never will be the great deliverer. Right. You see, Yahweh told Moses, certainly I will be with you. That's right. Yes, and I'm not talking about in a spiritual uh, just a cloud running around with Moses. I, when Yahweh says something, that, he says, certainly I will be with thee. See, people believe that God or Yahweh, he can create a man from the dust of the earth, but that he don't have the power himself to take on a physical body and walk around in his creation. Right. You see, but yet you can build a new house, you see, and walk around 
And you can give them all the plans how you want. I want this bedroom here. I want this bathroom there. I want this, that, and all, all that kind of way. And then you walk around in your creation, and you're just a man or a woman. What do you think about the creator? Right. You see? Look. Then before they could leave the land of Egypt, Yahweh told them they was going to deliver it. It wasn't going to be easy. You understand? See, these are types. It's just like it's easy when you go to somebody in ignorance, so don't, I mean in, in Egypt, but don't know nothing about Yahweh's purpose and plan. It's not an easy job. They went over it last night. It's power. It takes a lot of power to resurrect a person in their heart and in their mind from the things we've been taught all our lives. You see, you and I can't do it. You understand? It has to be the power of Yahweh that raised a person from the dead. Right. You understand? And we can't take credit for it. And he knew it, and he said that to Jeremiah. Look, let not the wise man glory in his might. Let not the smart man glory in his wisdom. But if you're going to glory in anything, just like when you come to this convention, I'm glad everybody here in Indianapolis, but I'm not glorying in that. I'm hoping that some new person might see. That's right. That's you see, y'all be going back to your respective schools, and then we down here still fighting. You understand? Yeah. But glory in this that you know, which means to have an intimate relationship with. I mean a personal, an individual relationship with. That you know and also, not just get up here and repeat it, but that you understand right. Yahweh. Mm -hmm. You understand? What he likes and what he dislikes. You understand? You see? Now, before they could leave out of the land of Egypt, they had to kill a lamb. See, you're talking about a death, but you also had some blood down there. Is that right? They had to take that blood of that lamb and strike it on a little door and the two side posts and the basin that they were dipping it from, giving them four points of blood. Is that right? You see, and then, you see, they had to bury that lamb within them. You understand? And then, you see, or you could talk about a burial when they went a three-day journey to and through the Red Sea. You're talking about a burial, or you're talking about the Red Sea, you're talking about some water. See, it's like, it's interchangeable. You understand? Then they resurrected out here into the wilderness of Sinai. That's a resurrection. Or they were following after that cloud who truly delivered, or you're talking about some spear. See, death, burial, resurrection, or blood, water and spirit. Is that right? You see? Now, see, then you might want to take it. Now, see, that's in the law. But keep in mind, we're not just telling fairy tales down here. That's right. You see, we're not telling you stuff for you to go make a movie about. Right. You understand? We're trying to show you how you're going to be saved. You see, I'm talking about there is only one way. See, a person say, well, I believe that as long as you believe this. That ain't what Yahweh said. That's not what Joshua the Messiah said. He said, I am the way. There is only one. He said, I am the truth. There's not a whole bunch of truth manifested out there in the world. And I am the light or the light. There is only one. You see? You see? Now, what was that? Okay. Now, you see this in the law. But he repeats this thing. We all heard the story of Noah. Is that right? See? Noah and the ark. You see, good little thing to learn in, learn in Sunday school and the preacher never go over it in the main sermon. It's just a good little story, you understand? Or we want to show you the moral of the story. No, that's not what it's talking about. We want you to be conscious and aware this is talking about something and it's talking about someone. You understand? Yahweh told Noah to build an ark, you see, because it was going to rain. See, and that's why, see, you, I, you come to know the longer you be in this gospel, when you tell somebody something different, it's hard for them to accept it. See, back here. It had never rained from the sky before. Mm -hmm. See, the plants were watered by a mist or a dew that came up out of the uh, ground. You see, and when Noah going around now, he went around 120 years. How many of you been doing that? 120 years. I mean, we, get, we come to class for a few months and go tell somebody and get rejected and we ready to quit. Mm -hmm. This man went 120 years and nobody yeah. believed him but his family. That's a long time. Ain't nobody in here 120 years old or better. You understand? You see, now he, he was re it was hard for them to accept something that they never seen before. You understand? But Yahweh showed it to Noah in a vision. You see, just like these charts, you can look at it, but it's going to have to be revealed to you actually what they're talking about. You understand? Mm -hmm. Then you'll be wanting to get into an art, not us going out and buying, making 84 lumber rich, but I'm talking about the true art or Yahshua the Messiah. 
See, it's good to come in these classes, but it's great to be in the body of Yahshua right. the Messiah yeah, yeah. or in the ark of safety. You understand? You see? Yeah. Now, anyway, Noah built an ark. Nevertheless, just be, and look, look at here. We said Yahweh has a plan, and it's not going to be hindered or deterred. Is that right? They spoke about last night how Yahweh spoke a thing, and then what? It came to pass. I don't care how long it takes. See, Yahweh don't count slackness as we count slackness, you see. But anyway, it did happen, and only ones got in the ark was Noah and his three sons, and Noah, his wife, and his three sons and their wives. Is that right? A total of eight souls got in that ark. Now, the rest of the world, they were, everything that had the breath of life in them, they what? They died. You see, and they died, you see, by some water. Or they were buried in that water, is that right? You're talking about a death, and you're talking about some blood, you see? And then it did rain 40 days and 40 nights, is that right? So you're talking about a death, they were killed, then they were buried, and then, you see, Noah and his family, they were resurrected in this ark. Keep these, pr these are principles, I know they're principles. You understand? You see? And keep these in mind. They were resurrected in the ark. Not on their own. They didn't swim to the top of the water. You understand? They were resurrected in the ark. You see, that gets you to thinking, well, I see. You can't do it by yourself. You know, there's a whole uh, bunch of people out there in the cemetery here in Indianapolis. And you have not seen a one of them, or whatever city you live in, you have not seen a one of them say, well, I'm tired of being dead. I think I'll get up. Uh -uh. Yeah. No, that's not the way it works. You're going to have to be resurrected by someone more powerful than you and I. You see? You see? Right. Now, they were resurrected in that ark. You're talking about a death, a burial, and a resurrection, or some blood, some water, and some spirit. Is that right? Well, take it. That, that, that's in the prophecy. So you're talking about, when it's talking about the gospel, and then it's talking about, Back in the script, when Paul and Yahshua was talking about the scriptures, mm -hmm. then you got a type there in the law and in the testimony. Right. Is that right? See, and there's many, in any story in your Bible, it all goes the self same way. But what is it all talking about? See, I know I don't have the time to go all through that. But see, at one time, you see, Yahweh, when he did deliver the children of Israel up out of the land of Egypt, you see, he called Moses up until your mouth. I know this is in your moderation. You see, and he showed Moses a vision and a revelation of this tabernacle path. Now Moses was the only one that received this tabernacle pattern in his heart and in his mind. You see, just like there's only a few of you in each city, truly, I mean, we might say, well, my class got 500 folks. But that class might have two million, I mean, that city might have two million people. That's just a drop in the bucket. Yeah, right. You understand? You see, now here come Moses. He was the only one that had that tabernacle pattern in his mind. You see, and he comes down and, he, and then he met some disputings. You see, they want to argue about something that Moses gave unto Yahweh. But nevertheless, it wasn't long that Yahweh made short work of them. You understand? And he went on and built it the self same way he was showed it up here in the mouth. You understand? In other words, you have to be persistent in this thing. See, Yahweh has not lost anyone, or Yahshua Messiah has not lost anyone that has chosen to come into the ark of safety. Now, see, we get, might get discouraged when we talk to folks, and they keep turning it down. But, see, it's prophesied that you are going to be persecuted, and it will be that way. That's why it's so precious when you talk about the new ones, and they do come in. Yeah. You see, it don't have to be a whole lot, just one. That's right. If we would have came to Indianapolis and just got one, if that's what Yahweh purposed, then I'm happy. Mm -hmm. You understand? That's right. If he give you 200, it don't make no 200 more headaches, but it. <laughs> If he give you 200, well, then be happy about that because still, as compared to five, over 5 billion people in the world, that's a very, very minute percentage. You understand? But nevertheless, he goes down and build a tabernacle pattern. And see, this was not a separate uh, 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 compartment from Yahweh. It was just a physical representation. Let me put it like this. Yahweh is represented on this chart as a cloud. Is that right? You see, then he takes on a shape and form right within himself, seen in visions and revelations. Is that right? See, but this and this, the self-same thing. You see, and then to make it even plainer, he transforms or transmutes instantaneously. You see, everything Yahweh does is quick. You understand? We might be the slowest people in the world. Everything Yahweh does is quick. You see, now he instantaneously transforms or transmutes into this threefold tabernacle pattern. Is that right? You see, and then, this is a spiritual one, this is a physical one. 
Now, Moses, that the spiritual one you got in your mind, I want you to uh, make a physical one like it in the wilderness of Sinai. Why? So that I might dwell among them. Is that right? You see? Now, when you take this tabernacle pattern over here on this elementary chart, you see, it was not only built, what you would call anatomy or structure, but it also had physiology or a function in this tabernacle pattern. See, you had a high priest and you had two low priests officiating or operating in that structure or in this tabernacle pattern. You see, even they had to go the self-same way of is that boring story that Paul said as far as the gospel is concerned. You understand? I'm putting it like this. Look, when they... Uh, the children of Israel sinned or broke a law, something had to die. And the people are lucky then that it wasn't them. Just like a lot of us are lucky now for some the things we might have done since we come into a knowledge and understanding that we wasn't offered up. You understand? You see, because we wasn't worthy enough. They didn't search heaven and didn't search earth and even under earth. They didn't find nobody worthy. This is the only one, folks. Mm -hmm. This one right here. You see? And then they had to kill them. You're talking about some death. Then they also you had to have the blood placed on the four corners of this uh, altar of sin sacrifice. Is that right? So you got your death and your blood. Then the high priest, see this labor had two functions to it. The high, uh, first of all, if something was dead, then they had to wash that sacrifice in the labor or liken it to what? A burial. You understand? Or you're talking about that labor is filled with what? Some water burial and water, then this priest, before he could function in this tabernacle pattern, he had to be anointed with what? Holy anointing oil. You see, a typifying a resurrection or what? Or a spirit. See, blood, water, spirit, or what? Death, burial, and resurrection. Is that right? See? Now, what is it all talking about? So when you see these witnesses over from Adam, over to Noah, over to the migratory train, over to the tabernacle pattern, you see. Then when Yahshua the Messiah comes in and he said that that was talking about him, then you got some witnesses now. You understand? My wife went to the store the other day and they asked her, see, I mean, just, Yahweh confirms it over and over again. I've heard it before, but they, the reason she couldn't buy what she wanted to because she didn't have her two IDs with her. And so by her not having the two IDs, I saved some money. You understand? You see? You see, because she couldn't purchase what she wanted. But see, the law and the testimony, as you read in Revelations 11 and 3, those are Yahshua's two witnesses. And Yahweh said that I will give power on my two witnesses. And Paul also said this gospel is the power to resurrect a man from the dead. I'm talking about, we're talking about, look, if you raise a man from the dead from a physical standpoint, that's good. That's, that's good. But somewhere down the line, as I think it was Dr. Gary Mathis said, somewhere down the line, this flesh is going to give out again. That's right. That's you see, right. I don't care if you live another 50 years after you've been resurrected from the dead, you're going to die again as right. long as you're in the flesh. That's right. But when you resurrect it from a spiritual and a psychological standpoint, that's a resurrection and a life forevermore. You understand? To never die again. And that's what we're all seeking. You understand? To come into a knowledge of. You see? Now, you're talking about a death, burial, and resurrection. The blood washed spirit is talking about this one right here. Yahshua Messiah. He even came in and he went out the self-same way. You see? He came in. He was that lamb that was slain right straight from the foundation of it. That's when he come into his ministry, when he started. You see? That's likened to what? A death. You see? A lamb slain from the foundation of the world. Then he goes to John to be baptized. You understand? Is that right? You see, in some what? In some water. So you got a lamb slain or a death and some blood. Then he's buried or baptized in that uh, water or burial. Is that right? And then the spirit in the form of a dove, you see, descends upon him. And you want to know something? Yahweh said, this is my beloved son in who I am well pleased. You understand? We ain't talking about Mary and Joseph's son. You understand? But Yahweh said, this is his son. But nevertheless, he came in by some blood, some water, and some spirit, you see. And when he went out, you see, what are all the old stories we was talking about in the Bible? They're talking about that one, Yahshua the Messiah. So many things is really coming out. Even like us, before we can come into the world. And every mother can testify of that. You come in, that cell, so you want to deny, I don't believe the Bible. Psalms 19.
I don't know why I stopped, but go ahead. Psalms 19. Uh -huh. The heavens declare the glory of El. Look, the heavens declare the glory of El. Right? Read. And the firmament showeth his handiwork. And the firmament showeth forth his handiwork. Yahweh had nobody that was co-eternal or co-existent or giving him instructions back here. I am El, there's none else. I am Elohim, there's none like me. There's a lot of people like you. <laughs> You can go to any city and look at people like, we come down here to Indianapolis, you can go look at somebody and say, they almost look like somebody I knew in Akron or Cleveland or something. There's a lot like you. There's a lot of people on your job that do the same job. They're like you. But Yahweh said, look, there's none like me. That's right. You see? And I'm the only one. They ain't, they ain't even... Go ahead. Day unto day utter a speech. Look, this thing, I remember... See, hearing Dr. Harris talk about this. The creation itself, or the things that Yahweh has created, they can all, they preach a far and do a far better job than we do of going into the gospel. You understand? I'm talking about you just leave the creation out there itself. It, as far as the death, burial, and resurrection goes, it goes, it does a, a lot further than us great extemporaneous oratorical speakers can do. You understand? <laughs> I'm just talking about the creation. You see? Read. The heavens declare the glory of El, and the firmament show up for his handiwork. We just, we just used to walk around. I'm going on a picnic, look at the trees. Oh, here's a nice shade tree. Throw our blanket out, get the food, masticate it and so forth, swallow it. I feel good. You take a nap. You see, you're not knowing that whatever you ate, it had to die. You see, you're not understanding why you're eating that food. You see, that it was dead, then you buried right here. That's right. You see, it goes down your esophagus, down into your uh, stomach, you understand. Mm -hmm. And then what, the blood reaches down and gets the nutrient. Then you lay down like you sleep. And it's something that, you know how it is when we get to finish eating. Mm -hmm. Everybody want to go to sleep. There's a reason for that, you understand. And sleep is what? Synonymous to death. You see? And then what happens? You get up, stressed up, refreshed. You're talking about what? You're talking about a resurrection. You see, you be doing, see, the heavens declare the glory of him. The firmament show forth his handiwork. Day, we do that day after day after day, unless you want to kick like they are and I'm on a diet. You understand? All that kind of stuff. They're trying to exercise this body, not understanding you're supposed to be exercising that inner body. It says bodily, I ain't saying just be a couch potato. It just says bodily exercise profit is little. But you want the one that profits a lot, that spiritual inner man. We'll go ahead. Read on. Day under day, utter a speech. Utter a speech. And night Look, the creation talks. That's right. That's right. But you've got to understand the language. See, everybody here speak English. Miles up here speaking German. You ain't going to understand what I'm talking about. You see, you have to research how to speak German if you want to understand what I'm talking about. Right. Just like you're going to have to research, do the investigation, and go through the one that's doing the speaking. Yahweh got a speech. He got a language. See, and day under day, his whole creation is just witnessing unto himself. And they gave a good example last night. They was talking about anything that a man creates, you know, they put their name on it. Yeah, that's right. Is that right? Now, I got a good idea. It caused me to remember. Now, here I am. I work at Ford, right? I still ain't never thought about it until again last night. And I done heard that over and over again. That's why it's good to come to these conventions, you see, and get uh, uplifted. That's right. You understand? As soon as you walk in the door, you see, they got a showcase like a trophy case. And they got t-shirts, they got sweaters, they got hats and jackets, which costs a fortune if you want one, right? Mm -hmm. But I'm saying they don't have Toyota on them. Right. They don't have Mercedes Benz on them. They got Ford on them. Man got enough sense to do that. Mm -hmm. What do you think about the creator That's right. that created the man? He put his name on his creation. Well, I don't believe the name is Yahweh. You understand? And yet every nerve running through your body breaks, branches out into a Y. Mm -hmm. You see? I remember Melvin Baker saying this one time. He thought them was M's in his hand. <laughs> for, for Melvin. You see? And I used to think it was for Moby. You see? But them is Y's. It's right there in you. 
You see, on your physical body. You understand? I don't know how I got in there. Come on. Day unto day, day utter speech. Day unto day utter speech. And night unto night showeth knowledge. And night unto night showeth forth knowledge. Read. There, there is no speech. There is no speech. Nor language. Nor language. Where their voice is not heard. Where Yahweh's voice is not heard. Is that right? Mm -hmm. You understand? Now look, you don't want to believe the Bible. You understand? When a mother has a child, there is a bursting of water. Everybody in here came that way. You understand? That's water. Then there was some showing, and there definitely was some showing of some blood. You understand? And then when that baby takes in that breath of life, it gives it what? Spirit or a resurrection, see? And you don't want to believe the Bible? Well, you are a witness unto Yahweh. You are a witness to the things that happen in the Bible. See, we told you, just like we were talking about last night. Now, all of us, or a lot of us, ate off a plate. Your plate, or some, you invite somebody to the house, it was not dirty before you start putting food on it. <laughs> but when you put that food on it, and when you finish eating, you don't take that plate and put it back up into the cabinet. No, 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 no. <laughs> Do you? Because if you... Nevertheless, you understand, it is likened into its dead state. Is that right? <laughs> then you take it and you put it in that joy or that dove or whatever makes your hands and fingernails soft and grow. <laughs> you see? And you bury it. Is that right? And then you see the shine in your face and it's likened into what? A resurrection. Uh, see, this thing is beautiful. Yeah, you see a true. death, a burial, and a resurrection. Mm -hmm. All of us sleep at night. Sleep is the closest thing that man comes be without being physically dead. Mm -hmm. That's like an unto death. You've heard the uh, phrase before, man, he was dead asleep. Mm -hmm. Well, I was dead asleep. Yeah. You see? Dead. You see? Then you cover yourself up, especially in these hotels where the air is blowing. It's like a, uh, a burial. Is that right? Then you're talking about you get up the next morning, you see? And then you're talking about a resurrection. See, it's all That's around right. us. That's right. You see what's going on? A death, a burial, and a resurrection. Now, see, when Yahshua the Messiah comes in, that's how you know that you had the Savior. It's not only in your Bible, but it's in you. You see, you are a witness to these things. So when Yahshua the Messiah come in, this wasn't no great mystery how he was going to die. It was foretold in the law and in the testimony. You see, when he was crucified, he was crucified with nail in each hand. You see, a nail in the feet. You see, and a crown of thorns around his head. Is that right? You're talking about some blood, four points of blood, or you're talking about some death. Is that right? And then what do you do with a dead man? Bear. You take him home. There is some people that do that. There are some people that people have died and they took them home. You understand? But no, a normal person, when a person is dead, you do what? You bear. bury him. You understand? So he was buried in Joseph's new tomb. But right there, when he told him in 1 Corinthians, the 15th chapter, that I will rise again. Yeah. Is that right? You see, right. then if you can see how all these deaths, burial, and resurrection took place, mm -hmm. see, there's no doubt in your mind that he, when he was placed in Joseph's new tomb, you understand that he was not going to be a resurrection. You see, now you can have confidence in That's that. Right. Now you can have faith in that. Now you can understand that there was a person that died for you. You see, but not only was he dead, that power is, as was stated last night, in the resurrection. Seven, John 17, chapter. Come on, so I can tie this up. John 17. Now these are types in the shadows. Now we're talking about Yahshua the Messiah. Well, how does this concern me? I'm going to show you how this concerns you, if I just have the time. Come on. These words spake Yahshua mm -hmm. and lifted up his eyes Now they want to say Matthew, the sixth chapter, is the Lord's Prayer. That was not the Lord's Prayer. No. That was a prayer he gave his disciples because they wanted one. You see? This is Yahshua's prayer in the Garden of Gethsemane, right? In John, the 17th chapter. These words spake Yahshua and lifted up his eyes as heaven and said... Father, Father, the hour is look, come. the hour is come. Glorify thy son, uh -huh. that thy son also may glorify thee. That's right. As thou hast given him power over all flesh. Well, I don't want to accept none. I don't care. Joshua the Messiah has power over all flesh. You are flesh. He got power over you. That's right. You understand? All flesh. Read on. That he should give eternal life to as many as thou hast and given him. It seems him. like the one that has the power to give eternal life, that's the one we should learn about. Just like if you go looking for a job, you don't go to the person that's working there. You go with the person that go to the person that's doing the hiring to get the job. 
Right. Just like if you're going to have eternal life, you got to go to the one that has the power over all flesh to give eternal life. Mm -hmm. You understand? Read. And this is life eternal. Now this is, you want to know what eternal life is? This is it. That they might know Look, thee. this ain't what I think, what I conceptualize or anything else. This is what eternal life is, or life eternal. That they what? That they might know thee. That you might know. See? You talked about her knowledge last night. But look, Adam knew his wife, Eve. And she conceived and bore offspring. Is that right? I'm talking about, in other words, the husband and the wife, they had a coming together as an intimate relationship. And as a result of offspring, that's from a natural standpoint. Now down here at the school, we're not talking about that kind of, no. We're talking about, not from a physical standpoint, we're talking about having an intimate relationship with the one that can give eternal life from a spiritual standpoint. And as a result of offspring, because any husband and wife come together, that offspring looks like, listen, it's parent. You see, just like if you have an intimate relationship with the Holy Spirit, it's going to look like and manifest after its parent. You see, I'm talking about the Holy Spirit. You see, read on. Come that on. they might know thee, uh -huh. the only true L. This is the only true one, not Jesus Christ. It wasn't the letter J in the Hebrew language, never was. And not even until this day. His name couldn't have been Jesus Christ. We're not saying you don't have a Savior. We're just simply saying his name wasn't Jesus Christ. You see, it's Yahshua the Messiah, one who is salvation or deliver. Read on. And Yahshua the Messiah, whom thou hast sent. You're going to have to know that Yahweh, he is the true Elohim, mm -hmm. and he's also Yahshua the Messiah, whom he has sent. That these three are a unity. They are not a trinity, that these three are one. This was not God's little boy walking back in the law and the testimony, you see, doing the institute and then coming in and doing the fulfilling. That was not God's little boy. That was Yahweh himself taking on that power, you see, to come on down into a physical body and carry out his own purpose, pattern, and plan. And if you want a job done, you got to do it yourself if you want it done right. And that's exactly what he did. You understand? Jeremiah, he wasn't good enough. Isaiah, he wasn't good enough. Greg, he's not good enough. You, whatever your name, me, who, whoever you are, you aren't good enough, you understand? You have to go through Yahshua the Messiah. Right. You understand? Now, when you have an intimate relationship with this Holy Spirit, you have to know the Holy Spirit first, and as a result of that Holy Spirit be resurrected or manifested in you. And it's not just, you understand, not just a, 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 a spirit floating off somewhere. This spirit has substance. See, it is divine intelligence. We ain't talking about man's intelligence. It is divine intelligence, divine wisdom, knowledge, love, beauty, justice, foundation, power, strength, resurrected where? In somebody else? You can easily see that in somebody else. You understand? I'm talking about you're going to have to see it manifested in you. Now, you're talking about, now we're reading right there and say, oh, that's a good little story. Who Yahshua the Messiah has sent. Is that right? We're talking about, see, it's easy for us to get up and talk about him back here. First John, the fourth chapter. First John, four and one. Uh -huh. Beloved, uh -huh. believe not every spirit. See, it didn't say everybody. That's right. Every spirit. See, the, your body, my body, the bodies don't mean nothing. That's right. See, it's, uh, you, you're, you're in a war, folks. And it's either the mystery of righteousness operating or the mystery of unrighteousness operating. Forget the physical bodies. You understand? Read. Beloved, believe not every spirit, mm -hmm. but try the spirit. And you cannot try the spirit unless you have the spirit. you got to have something to try it with. You must have the spirit in you. That's right. You see? And coming into these classes and knowing your creator, talking about, well, why I got to come to class three times a week? Why? Because you don't have the whole thing in totality as Yahweh does. So you have to come and learn a little here and a little there. Right back to Moses, you see. Right back to Yahshua the Messiah. Back there with Samson. Back there with Daniel. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And all that kind of stuff. You see, now, you know, if you miss it one time, Yahweh is like... You might miss a, 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 something from a natural standpoint, you see, but I'm talking about Yahweh is fair. If you miss it one time, you come back to class, he might show you the next time That's right. because it's going over again. Mm -hmm. If you miss it that time, then he might show it, uh, you know, he shows it again. In other words, he's merciful unto all of us. Yes, 
You understand? Because there's a lot of things that we've heard. I'm talking about, I can testify to this, my own personal self. Maybe you're a lot smarter. But there's a lot of things that I've heard about in Moses that I'm still trying to understand about. Yeah. I'm talking about the true spiritual understanding. I ain't talking about getting up here repeating. I'm talking about the true spiritual right. understanding. You see? And like the founder said, look, it's good to ask questions. That's right. Only dumb question is the one you don't ask. You understand why? Because if you really want to know, you will ask questions. Don't sit up there and say, well, I've been in class 12 years, mm -hmm. supposed to be a dean. I'm not going to ask any questions. Mm -hmm. If I want to know, if I'm sincere about my own soul, I'm going to ask that question. I don't care who's in the room. That's right. I don't care if the very new one is in there. I'm going to ask. That's right. You understand? But read uh, where, where you was at. Beloved, believe not every spirit. Now, believe not every spirit. But right? try the spirit. But try them. Whether they are of Yahweh. Now, see, whether they are of Yahweh. Because now, how can you recognize somebody that has the spirit of Yahweh? You see? You can't look at nobody and say, hmm, they got the Holy Spirit. I mean, just standing there looking at them. I ain't talking about where you can see it manifested later. I'm just talking about just sitting and looking at each other. You can't. Tell that if they got the spirit of Yahweh. Right. But as soon as they open their mouth, right. or you check them out for a while, you can tell. You understand? But anyway, go ahead. Because many false prophets are gone out into the world. Many false prophets, see? We come uh -huh. to class, we don't know the difference between this and that. Uh -huh. You understand? Yeah. We don't understand the difference between institute and fulfill. Yeah, right. He didn't say many false prophets will go out no, when no, uh, y'all no, born. He said many prophets almost 2,000 years ago are going out, right? right? Read. Hereby know ye the spirit of Yahweh. Now here's how you can know the spirit of Yahweh. I'm talking about to the old and the new. Here's how you can know it. Every spirit that confesses that Yahshua the Messiah now, every is... Spirit. Now see, it ain't about, this ain't no glory contest up on this floor. I was shaking in my seat for two days. Now I was glad to get it out the way. You see, I'm talking about that just from me thinking. You understand? <laughs> Read that's that right, again. That's right. Hereby know ye the spirit of Yahweh. Uh -huh. Every spirit that confesses. Now see, not everybody, but every spirit that confesses. It's a spirit that's operating in there. You're not operating on your own. It's a spirit that's operating in you. Either one or the other. We're down here at the end of an age. You see, and Yahweh is getting ready to take this thing out. And you can't be talking about being lukewarm. I wonder if I got the Holy Spirit or not. You're going to have to know a, a woman that's walking around pregnant. She don't say, am I pregnant? <laughs> Does she? No. She knows that she is. You see? And it's manifested that she is. You understand? Well, if the self saying natural, as Romans 119 is our theme song, you take the natural to understand the spiritual. My wife didn't do a good job of sewing this song. But look, take the natural to understand the spiritual. Is that right? Every spirit that confesses. Now that confesses don't, well, I can get up there and do what Greg did, and he's supposed to be a dean. Of course you can confess that. You should be able to. You understand? That ain't the glory. I ain't glorying in what I, you little bit I come across with. You understand? You can confess it with your mouth, but that confession also has to come through your daily life of manifestation. That's why I went through that, a death, burial, and resurrection. It's easy to put it on this one. But what if somebody cut in front of you on the highway? How do you react? Do you confess that you got the Holy Spirit? You ready to run them off the road? Or do you say, or do you say, that's okay. You understand? See? Or be at the, be at the uh, Lawson's or something or another. Standing in line two hours. Go back maybe to reach for something somebody didn't cut in front of you. Do you say, well, go right ahead, sir. I mean, that's conf I mean, a lot of times little things we go through, that, that is a confession. How do you handle those trials and your tribulations? You're going to have them. It ain't no great big surprise. You're going to have them. But I don't know the bell been rung. Oh, well, I want to go into that. But come on. Every spirit that confesses that Yahshua Messiah is come, he is come, not did come. Or like they teach out in the world, Jesus is coming. But it's talking about is come, right? See, so you know it ain't talking about this back here. It's talking about he has come where? In you. I'm talking about as of right now. We're not waiting on him to come. He's supposed to be in us right now. We ain't opening up the doors of the convention hall and let the Holy Spirit come in. Mm -hmm. You're supposed to bring him in with you. You understand? You see right there within you. You see? 
See, this cloud back here, it was in the tabernacle. It wasn't in the people. But now, that cloud or that Holy Spirit is going to have to be where? In you. That's Joshua Messiah is come in the flesh as of right now, okay. read. Come is on. of Yahweh. Now that person is of Yahweh. The way you talk, the way you walk, by confessing that Holy Spirit, that is of Yahweh. I'm talking about these divine attributes. And there are more. Mm -hmm. These are just nine divine attributes. And I know one that a lot of people have trouble with, long-suffering and patient. That's an attribute. Mm -hmm. You see? And a lot, I can say for myself, a lot of times I get a little short on that sometimes. Mm -hmm. You see? Read on. And every spirit that confesses not that Yahshua Messiah is coming to flesh. Now, every one of them that's talking about Jesus is coming, or I don't know what's wrong with me, why I act that way, you see, that means he ain't come yet. Right. If he got the power over all flesh, you can't even make your kids mine. You, your physical body. But I'm talking about he has the power over to make you act the way he wants you to act. You see, tell me I can't act right. He got the power to make you act right, talk right, that's be right. right. That's right. Right? Right. You see? Right. Read. And every spirit that confesses not that Yahshua's Messiah is coming. Now the flesh. one that says he's coming, that is not of Yahweh. You see, that is of that satanic spirit. We have to cut it just like it is. That's right. You understand? You see? And as he said in that same John, in 1 John the third chapter, believe in the name and love one another. Thank you. Mm -hmm.